welcome to B to your next lesson on surface area and volume. Uh, actually, this is your first lesson on surface area, uh, but your next lesson on volume. Uh, our topic today is cylinders, and our goal, I can find the surface area and volume of cylinders. Okay, so we can think of a cylinder as just a circular prism, and the first thing I need to do here is just kind of fix this. That should say area of the base down here probably says that on your copy of this. Um, so we can think of a cylinder as a circular prism. And the reason we can think of it as a circular prism is because, well, here's a cylinder. Uh, it has a circular bottom and it has a circular top. And the circular bottom and the circular top are exactly the same. And then we just connect the top to the bottom with sides that are parallel. Um, so that's actually the very definition of a prism is that it has the same base as it has a top, and then the other sides just connect it. Um, the difference here is that uh, the base and the top being circles don't really have a number of sides. They're, they're smooth, so it looks a little different than a regular prism. Um, so we have volume equals area of the base times the height. Now since we know the area of the base is a circle, we can make a more specific formula, and here's what we have. Um, volume equals area of the base times the height, but the area of the base is a circle, and I know that to find the area of a circle, I need pi r squared. Uh, so usually we don't use a capital H, we just use a little h. So this is the formula you're going to see most often. Volume equals pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. And so there's a little diagram. Uh, for us to volume equals pi r squared h, where r is the radius of the cylinder and h is the height of the cylinder. So let's use that formula. Find the volume of the given cylinder. So volume equals pi r squared, that's the area of the base, times the height of the object. So I'm going to leave that as a pi for right now. R is 4.9 squared, and the height is this distance here, so I'm looking at the 7.8. And of course it's all in feet, we'll put that in when we're done. Now you can just type this all into your calculator. Uh, use your pi button, times 4.9, use your squared button, or type in times 4.9 again if you really want to, uh, and then times 7.8. And once you put that all in, your answer should be 588.35. And this was measured in feet, so our answer, since this is volume, will be cubic feet. Okay, next question. Each tennis ball is a sphere with a radius of 3.25 centimeters. Find the volume of the can of tennis balls round to the nearest cubic centimeter. Well, the, this is a cylinder, so we need the cylinder formula. Volume equals pi r squared h. Now the radius in this case, each of these balls are exactly the same. And so this over here would be exactly the same as this over here. So the radius of the bottom is 3.25, like every other ball that's in there. So we need pi times 3.25 is the radius. And of course I have to square it from according to the uh, formula. And now I need an h. Now we don't have an h at all here, but I do know that the ball is symmetric everywhere there's that 3.25 so from this end of the can to this end of the can I actually have six 3.25's so if I do six times 3.25 that's going to give me the height of the can because remember height goes from one base to the other base that's what we mean by height so six times 3.25 is 19 0.5, and so we need to fill that in here. 19.5 is the height of the can. And let's just multiply that all out. Remember pi is 3.14159, or just use the pi button on your calculator, makes it a little bit easier. Uh, what you end up getting is 
and 47.07 um, centimeters. And since this is the volume, we're going to need that to be cubed. Now this last one's a little different. It says the volume of a cylinder is 1806.41 cubic inches. If the radius is 5 inches, what is the height? Um, so we're finding a different thing. We still need this formula, volume equals pi r squared h, but what we're finding is different. I'm going to put this number in since it told us it's the volume, I'm going to put it in for volume, which is 1806.41 equals pi. R in this case is 5. We have to square it, and we need an h. So the one thing that I can do is square 5. So I have a 25 pi over here, and it is multiplying this h, and the volume is still 1806.41. Now, in order to get this h by itself, I have to divide both sides by 25 pi. Remember your rules of algebra. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other, and I need these two things to divide away to 1 so they go away. Now, be careful when you punch this into your calculator. What you're going to have to do is type in 1806.41 divided by 25 and then divided by pi, your pi button on your calculator. Uh, and the reason you have to do that, or you could put your put 25 pi in brackets, so you could do divided by and then in brackets put 25 times pi. Uh, your calculator knows order of operations, so you got to make sure you tell it to do it in the right direction. Um, what you should get when you get that done is 20 3 equals h. And of course this is in inches and since this is a word problem we're going to answer it in words and say therefore the height is 23 inches. Okay so that concludes our examples on volume. Now we're going to take a look at surface area. Now surface area is just what it sounds like. Uh, it's the area of all the surfaces added together. All of them. Um, if we unroll a cylinder, it's two circles and one rectangle, as it looks down here. So we've unrolled this cylinder. This circle here corresponds to this circle here. And then this circle here is the bottom of the can. <coughs> So, uh, let's take a look uh, at how we develop a formula. I've got two circles, uh, and so the two circles are going to be pi r squared. So the surface area starts with uh, pi r squared, and since there's two circles, one here and one here, we're going to times this by two. And then we have to add in this area of this rectangle. And the rectangle is the side. If you unroll a tube, the side becomes a rectangle. And so we have to know how long it is. This part here corresponds to the height. If this is the height of the can from base to base, then the height is right here. But we have to know how long this side is. Now this side has to be long enough to wrap completely around this circle. So if it's going to wrap around the circle, it has to have the same length as the perimeter of the circle, or as we call circles, the circumference of the circle. Uh, to find the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. So we need um, 2 pi r times h to give us the area of this thing here. So the area of this rectangle is this 2 pi r multiplied by this distance here, which is h. So we need 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And that's the formula for the surface area of a cylinder. So we'll do a couple of examples like that. Find the surface area of this particular cylinder. 
So it's as simple as punching into the formula and then making sure you follow through the formula correctly. So we have surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And as I go through this formula, I'm actually going to leave pi as pi for as long as I possibly can. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 2 pi and r in this case is 4.9 and we have to square it. Here's our r right there. And then I have to add plus 2 pi and then another r, 4.9, and I have to multiply that by h, 7.8. Now 2 times 4.9 times 4.9, if I type that in, and again I said I'm going to leave pi as pi for as long as I possibly can. So 2 times 4.9 squared is 48.02 and I still have to multiply that by pi, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, you can do it if you want to, but this is going to simplify how, how I punch into the calculator, and if it simplifies that, then it, simpli <coughs> it takes away some errors that I might make. Uh, so I have to add to that 2 times pi times 4.9 times 7.8, which is, gives me 76.44, and it still has a pi too. Now since they both have a pi, it's kind of like like terms. Even though pi, we know what it is. It's not a variable. It's a constant. It's 3.14159. We can treat it as a variable in this case, and I'm going to collect like terms between the two. And so I get 124.46 pi. And now I pick up the calculator and type in 124.46 times your pi button, and you get 391.00 feet and this is surface area, so since it's surface area, it's feet squared. And the last one is just a straight application, except that um, we don't have a diagram this time. We have to get our information out of here. So we say surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And this says, how much sheet metal is required to make a cylindrical trash can with a diameter of 2 feet and a height of 4.25 feet? Well, this is a trash can, so I'm going to assume that it doesn't, um, that it has a, a lid that's the same as the bottom. So there might be a little bit more of an overhang on the lid. If we wanted to assume that there was no lid, we would take this away because it would only have one circle. But I'm going to assume that it has a lid on it, uh, and then that lid is the same as the bottom. And so we're going to go 2 pi. Now r is tricky. This has given us the diameter of 2 feet. So since it's given us a diameter of 2 feet, we have to take this and divide by 2 to give us the radius, which is nice because when we do that, it comes out to be 1, and 1 is a very nice number to work with when you're multiplying, plus 2 pi times 1 times 4.25, which is our height. So if we were drawing this, here would be our trash can with a lid the same as the same shape as the bottom. And it has the height of 4.25 feet. So there's our distance between the two identical shapes. And so let's just finish this off. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, so this is just 2 pi here. And 2 times 1 is 2, and then 2 times 4.25 is 8.5, and of course it still has a pi. 2 plus 8.5 is 10.5 pi. And then I type that into the calculator, and 10.5 times pi is actually 33 feet and its area, so it has to be square feet. Now this is a uh, word problem, so I should answer it in words. And I'm going to do a little bit of rounding here too, because it says how much sheet metal is required to make it. This is exactly 33 square feet. We're probably going to need a little bit more than that for seams and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to say you probably need
around um, 35 square feet. We're going to add a couple square feet on there just for overhang and things like that to make the trash can. And let's say probably around. We're being very wishy-washy here, but um, we don't have anything for sure there. So, And that is the end of this lesson.